Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with 10 tips to improve your eye animation. I'm going to be working with metahumans for this tutorial, but a lot of the general tips in terms of eye darts and blinks are applicable to most animated rigs. So the first thing I would recommend you do when you're setting up your scenes, either if you're working in Maya or if you're working in Unreal, is make sure that you've got the frame counter active. So if you see here, if I play back, I can see that I am getting 24 frames per second even while I'm recording here. And this is important because this is going to throw your timing off if you're uh, chugging through at a lower frame rate. If you are finding that you're getting a lower frame rate, if you're using MetaHumans, you can always switch to a lower LOD and that will probably improve your performance. To make sure that your frame counter is active, you can go to display, heads up display and enable frame rate. If you're animating directly inside of Unreal, you can enable the frame counter by going up here to this little three line box and clicking show FPS and you'll get your frame counter there. So you can see I'm currently running at less than the 24 frames per second that I'm desiring and this can be achieved again with a lower LOD. So under the blueprint for your character, you can just scroll down to LOD sync and then you can force the LOD to be something like three and that can improve your FPS dramatically. So on the playback, we can expect to see real-time playback. The next tip is the same thing that I say to all my animation students and that is to work big to small. So the eyes are pretty much the last thing that you wanna be animating. And so how I normally have it set up is I would do my animation for my head movement first and things like that. The breathing, um, you can see this character you can see the shoulders rise and there's a little bit of y-axis or z-axis in this case uh, movement um, and if i go to my control rig here the thing that i would normally do is just have this switch set to the zero or off position and that means that the head and eyes will always be targeting the same direction so do your head movements first and use that as a basis for where your character will look. Other key facial expressions are useful to put in at the same time. So this will include the brow motions. And even the blinks can be useful to put in at this time. But that can be tied into other aspects of the eye animation. And we'll go over that shortly. And hey, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on. Otherwise, you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. The first thing you need to know about blinks is the timing. And the timing is something I work with a, a ratio. So it can be lengthened or it can be contracted if you need it to be faster or slower, depending on the rig that you're working with. And generally what I look at is something like a 1 to 1.5 ratio. So that means if the downward motion of the eye takes two frames, the upward motion would take three frames. So you can see here from frame one to one, frame three, the eyes are blinking downward, and then it takes three frames for them to raise again. And once you've done this, you can just copy paste this frame over and over if you need to. However, your blinks will start to look a little bit artificial if you do that. I would recommend just customizing how far the blinks actually go down every time you do them. So to show this, just focusing here on her right eye, and the right eyes controller. On the first blink downward, we're getting mostly a full compression, but you can see that the eyelids aren't actually completely touching, and this is not uncommon when you blink. And the actual value is 0.78, so it goes down 0.78. On the second blink, as the eye turns, we go down to 0.678, so not the exact same. And also I would point out that both eyelids are not compressing the same amount. And this is important because it's very rare that your face works exactly symmetrically. So for the sake of realism, I would recommend that. You can see here on a much slower blink that the same ratio is still essentially being used. And this is a rule of thumb. It's not exactly 1.5. Sometimes it might be 1 to 2. And in this case, it's probably closer to 1 to 2. So the downward blink is about 14 frames. And then the up takes from about 91 to 115. So about 25 frames. So 14 to 25 
it's not quite 1.5 but it's close enough the main thing that you should be taking away from this is that the downward motion of the eyelids is always quicker than the upward motion and this is consistent regardless of the style of blink that you're working with and the timing of blink that you're working with tip number three is darts and darts are just the way the eyes will move around and inspect the entirety of what they're looking at because you can only focus on a relatively small area at a time when you're looking at something so for example with a face you would tend to look at someone's eyes and then you might inspect other areas of their face as you're communicating with them you're looking for non-verbal cues when you're speaking to someone you're way more intelligent than you likely give yourself credit for and you're looking for these all all of these extra things that people will show with their body language rather than say with their mouth so all you are doing with your eyes is gathering survival information so keep that in mind the eye movements the darts are not excessive in the distance in which they travel so if we look at our eye controller here you can see it doesn't actually move around a great deal so if you're working on this and you want to block something in what i'd recommend is using some proxy geometry just to adjust how much you could expect the eyes to move so at the moment you can see here i've got the eye look constraint moving around a little bit and how i would do something like this is by putting some geometry in say she's looking at someone's head so i'll just get a sphere that's roughly the same size as a head according to her size and i'll put it in here so something like this and you can see that the controller is just looking around the main area where that you'd expect to see it look so it's looking around the eyes darts down to the mouth and then looks back to where it was looking in the first place and it might seem like a small detail but it does add quite a bit to the general naturalness of the eyes they don't seem to just lock on and focus on one specific area your eyes will focus uh, for a period of time on some things generally for maybe up to five seconds if you're looking directly into someone's eyes after that people do tend to get a little bit uncomfortable so expect the eyes to wander a little bit or dart away every now and then if it's a conversation that's being had if they're looking at an object again they're gathering survival information what is useful about this object to them what information can they take away from it that is going to help them if they're looking at a car or if they're checking someone out uh, the eye of motion will be different what i've done here is essentially had the character look to the side as if they've seen someone or something that is appealing or they find make, gives them some level of joy so there's a bit of a smile they look around it holds their attention you can see as they start to turn away and then their eyes dart back to the camera and on the topic of eyes darting back to the camera we'll move on to tip number five and that is eye motion tends to be hidden by blinks so if you're darting your eyes from one extreme angle to another you would tend to blink to cover the motion of your eyes and you can see that happening here between 88 and 91 so there is a three roughly three frame compression of the eyes we can actually see the timing of the blink here so we've got a two frame down and a three frame up the eyelids will blink down for two frames here and then the eyes will dart across in that time so watch the timing of this look constraint for those first two frames it is already moving and essentially the entire and this is another good opportunity to mention that the eyes will not always fully compress on a blink in fact what i've noticed is that when people look from one extreme angle to another they do not tend to compress their eyelids fully tip number six that we're going to look at here is pupil dilation now pupil dilation is something that you're really only going to see at a very strong close-up and in this particular shot i'm pretty much at macro length so what's happening here is her right eye as she's blinking there is some slight pupil dilation and contraction if you're looking at between a bright area and a dark area what will happen is your pupil will contract and expand a little bit until it finds the right size that it needs to be at to give you the correct amount of light to be able to see in the environment you're in so if it's darker you could expect the pupil to be a lot larger than if you were outside and it was brighter your pupil would be smaller so you can see here on the right eye pupil i didn't bother doing with this with the left because it was out of focus in this shot you can see that there's a small amount of animation occurring between here at a value of zero which is its default and then as it looks towards the light we're getting a little bit smaller
And again, we're not talking about huge values here. It is just a small detail that you may want to add on close-ups to help improve the overall realism of the shot. Tip number seven is the frequency of blinks. Blinks will generally occur at a rate of about six per minute. So not very often, about once every 10 seconds. Obviously this will occur more often if you're in an environment where you're protecting your eyes. So it's very windy or it's very bright. You might be fluttering your eyes as you're coming outside, something like that. If you're blinking a lot, something's wrong. Uh, you're confused or you're lying. So these are little acting things that you could apply to your character if you need to. But generally what I would say is don't overdo it. Less is more. So in this five second sequence, I've actually got three whole blinks. Um, two of them are the look from left to right. So that's not uncommon. And then there is one at the, at the very start there as well. So that would have been the first one in the 10 second sequence. But generally this is actually quite a few blinks. So again, less is more, don't overdo it. People will notice if your character is blinking a whole lot. In this short sequence here, we've got a bit of a grimace, a bit of fearfulness in the character. And um, what's actually occurring is the character squeezes their eyes shut momentarily. And that occurs here. And what you could expect to see with when the eyes are squeezed shut is a lot of compression in the face. So what we'll see in the rig here is that I'm using the secondary tweakers. And they're very useful for getting this extra deformation in the surrounding muscles of the eye. So you can see that on the right hand side, if I move this up and down, we get all this extra squeezing. And this is a great addition. If you're trying to get a squint, I would definitely be using these. Think of these as they occur first and then the blink itself will follow. So if we watch, this should move first and then the, this controller should move second or thereabouts. And then the same applies in the opposite direction. So as the muscles relax, the blink follows. So these sorts of extreme compressions are always again work from big to small. So work from the larger facial scrunch controllers to the smaller blink. And this offset may only be one or two frames. There may not be an offset as well. This is going to be up to you and the timing that you're working with. The timing on this particular animation is quite slow. So the blink downwards is quite slow, but the relaxing is um, also quite slow. So you can see that offset occurring just ever so slightly there. Speaking of squeezing the eyes shut, that will bring us to tip number nine, and that is that your eyes do tend to look up as you close your eyes for an extended period of time. So as you're going to sleep or if you're being knocked unconscious, you'll notice that the eyes will roll up into the head. And this is occurring here. It doesn't mean that they're going to look all the way into the back of your skull always, but a couple of frames where you can see the eyes start to travel up just before that blink occurs does add a little bit of that believability and then you can see as the eyes open the look controller moves down to reveal the pupils again so you'll only see about two or three frames maybe in most cases of the eyes rolling up before the closure or the open so you can see as it's played back in sequence we get quite a nice little bit of eye animation there So the practical purpose of your eyes, eyelids, is to protect your eyes and that means that they are there to lubricate your eyes and keep them obviously nice and wet and that is the blink rate coming into play there. But the other thing is they are designed to protect your eyes from any sort of danger because they are an organ that we like, they are very important to our survival. So you can see here in this grimace the eyes are squeezing shut and something that I did here on this particular one is that you'll notice that the eye that is closest to where she is looking, the thing that she's grimacing at, is closed slightly more than the one that is closer to the camera or further away from the danger. And this is something that will occur. So if you imagine you're driving along and then you notice some danger to your right hand side, imagine your tensing up and you'll notice that you will tense and roll into like a semi-fetal position. You'll contract your muscles, particularly toward the side of where the danger is coming from. So in this case, you can see on the her left-hand side, the eyes squint a little bit more. 
We've also got a slight amount of fluttering occurring here and this is because of the tension. When you tense up really hard you do tend to shudder and this will also occur in the eyes as well. And my final tip, bonus tip in fact, is reference. Reference is something you should be using all the time as an animator. It is important though to realize that reference is not gospel. It is something that you're using to guide you, but it doesn't mean that your timing or your shape language or your silhouettes should be exactly one to one. It is there to help you get your character to act in a way that feels natural. Now your reference can be video footage, it can be you looking in a mirror, but most importantly it should be you acting out physically what your character is doing. It doesn't matter if your character is a human or a dog or a space alien, you should be trying to get into their body and do the same movements they're doing. It'll improve your timing, it'll improve your weight, it'll improve pretty much every single fundamental aspect of your animation. So that is it for blinks. I'm very sorry that I've made you think about blinking consciously for the last however many minutes this tutorial has gone for, but I hope that you've gotten something out of it. If you did like this or found any specific tip useful, make, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear how you helped, or if you've got any tips of your own, please feel free to share. Patrons this week, I will be giving you the FBX control rigs for what I did in this animation. So you can apply this animation to your metahumans and see how I timed it and see if you wanted to make any adjustments from there. For everyone else, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, particularly if you like animation, because there's a lot of animation tutorials coming out in the near future. So look out for those. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.